How's it going, everybody? First John chapter five, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, ah, oh, the Word. John, who wrote the Gospel of John, opens up with, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And how all things were made by the word and the word made anything that anything that was made was made by the word. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us at verse 14. So it's saying, and here's John in his uh, epistle referring to the Father, the Word, which is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And then he goes on to say, and these three are one, <laughs> because it's the same. Um, God, the Father, is God in his fullness. And mankind never deals with with that God. Directly. I think in the in the Holy of Holies, there was, you know, the veil, there were lots of things to keep man separate from God the Father. And God is so vast and man is so bleh. he's in his flesh and Paul explains what that's like in Romans 7. I've got a tremendous study on that on the playlist on this channel. You got to scroll all the way down near the bottom of the playlist and you'll see Romans 11 and Romans 7. Both are just fascinating studies that are just not properly um, taught but what the Holy Spirit and when God came in the flesh and now he gives us his spirit those are little slivers of God because we cannot absorb all of God but you know so he gives us like a small percentage of himself which is all we need it's all we need and it's all we can handle. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. I wonder how that's worded in the New Living. We could, you know, the, the, the New Living really was horrible the other day. Now, look at how it just says, so we have these three witnesses. <laughs> and then it says the spirit, the water, and the blood and all three agree. Look how watered down that was. That's crazy. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God and God has testified about his son. Okay, well that sounded pretty legit. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in the son. He that have the Son have life. He that have not the Son of God have not life. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. So let's go ahead on. Things that are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. So let's reread it. And this is the record that God have given to us eternal life. Eternal life. And this life is in the truth. He that have the truth have life he that have not the truth 
have not life? Do you believe in free will decisions for salvation? Mm. <laughs> you don't have the truth. These things I have written unto you, unto you that believe on his name. And again, we've been over it many times. Believing is faith. Faith is the proper call. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. And Jesus said, my sheep are my voice. And John the Baptist, so one will come after me that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So real faith is the proper call, Romans 10, 17. And it's the proper walk, James 2, 14 through 26. And Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the tangible evidence of your salvation. It's the tangible evidence of the Holy Spirit. So... All of these are just parables. All goats and lost sheep believe that it's lip service, even though Jesus said they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And in Matthew 7, uh, 21 through 23, Jesus tells you plainly, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all? Didn't we go to church on Sunday and say we believe in Jesus and what does Jesus say? I never knew you. But for whom he does know, for whom the Lord loveth, Hebrews 12, 6 through 8, he will lock you down and beat the world out of all of his. Those that are without are bastards. That's Hebrews 12, 6 through 8 in a nutshell. Read it for yourself. Jesus said, ye believe me not because ye are not my sheep. Oh, I thought we had free will decisions to just do stuff. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Faith comes from hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. John the Baptist said, one will come after me that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, even the Lord hath made both of them. When did he do that? Before the foundation of the world. He has chosen us in him. Before the foundation. You know what? I, I read a portion of it and I messed. I, I don't even have it in my head anymore. For he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, having predestinated us unto himself according un for he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love having predestinated us unto the children of Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will that's when the sheep the hearing ear and the seeing eye even the lord have made both of them all ordained from before the foundation of the world. Sheep are born lost. They get the call. Jesus said, I only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We are grafted in Jews. Romans 11. These things I've written unto you that believe properly on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's a proper belief, not the fake one. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Even God, when he came in the flesh, when he prayed to God the Father, and I know that's difficult to grasp, but that's the parable of it all. He said, not my will, Father, your will be done. In other words, what God in the flesh was saying was, I bow to everything that I declared before the earth was even formed. That's the sovereign God. That we're all just living in his movie script.
and he even came in a cameo appearance. He's the writer, producer, director, and even starred in a cameo appearance. And he plays in in, in this movie. He 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 is God the Father. He comes in the flesh as Jesus. So he's the star of his own movie. And of course, the Holy Spirit. And you watch Hollywood do the same stuff, don't you? Because Mystery of Babylon is an upside down world of God. So you'll see um, actors play three different roles. You'll see directors um, come into the movie as actors. Like Quentin Tarantino has been in his own movies. Alfred Hitchcock was in his own movies. Eddie Murphy played... Three, four, five different characters in movies. It's fascinating, isn't it? Well, sure it is. Now let's begin Daniel 5. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine commanded to bring in the gold and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines, might drink therein. Kind of like a middle finger to God, God's people, to Israel, to the church. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. Concubines are people the king would sleep with, but not marry. Probably, once he got somebody pregnant, they then became one of his wives. Makes sense. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over the candlestick, excuse me, wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. This is where we get the expression, read the writing on the wall. And where the Adams family gave you thing, which was just a hand. But a hand that does quite a lot if you watched the Wednesday series. Then the king's, like the hand does here. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote against one another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to these wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing and show the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be third ruler in the kingdom. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime.